Hello, and welcome to this chess course for beginners. In this series, we'll be taking a look at openings for white and black and trying to understand them at the beginner's level. In this video, we'll start by looking at 1e4 and how we can try to fight against it. It's always important to take a look at our opponent's ideas, and I think here white is threatening to play d4. Two pawns taking control of the center of the chessboard. So with this idea in mind, how can we stop our opponent's best move? D4. Hopefully you found what I think the best moves are. E5 and C5. Trying to stop our opponent from playing what might be uh, one of the best moves. In this course, we're going to be focusing on e5 to start. With this move, your pieces can be more quickly developed. After e5, the most common move is knight f3. In other videos, we'll take a look at other choices. But we'll start with the most common move, because that's what you're going to face up against most of the time. So knight f3 attacks our unprotected e5 pawn, and our pawn now needs to be protected. We have a bunch of ways to protect the pawn, but most of them are pretty bad. So let's see if we can find all the ways to save this pawn. And maybe we can think about what's the best of, the, of all these choices. So we could play f6, we could play d6, we could play bishop d6, queen e7, queen f7, maybe knight c6. Bunch of choices to save this little e5 pawn. Most of them are pretty terrible. Let's go uh, from worst to best, or in my opinion, best. So first of all, we can play f6. It's probably the worst choice because you create a hole in your king's house. Now, if you ever try to live over there, it'd be a little bit difficult with this open window that you've created. And even before we castle, there's another open window that the f pawn is supposed to be covering uh, and now, I think your king's not going to really like what's going to happen to him. Uh, for instance, white could even do something kind of crazy, sacrifice his knight. But now your king is going to come under some pretty big attacks. Let's check. Yeah, it's not a very good place for your king to be. If you try to block with your g-pawn, the very typical double attack happens. It's your rook at, at the very least. Yeah, let's not try to play f6 if we can help it. So let's take that off the table. It's probably not the best choice. Now let's take a, look, take a look at the other choices. So next, I think worst move would be maybe queen e7. At least we protect our pawn, but your bishop's going to be mad at you. Let's not make the bishop mad if we don't have to. So let's take that one off the table. Queen f6, also pretty bad move. Your knight's uh, supposed to go to the center, supposed to use the f6 square. You stole it from him. So maybe that's not the best move. Also, your queen isn't supposed to be out early. You know, later they might poke you, might poke you. Yeah, your queen just shouldn't be out before the other pieces. Let's take that option off as well. That leaves us with a, a few other choices. They're getting better. These choices probably don't lose on the spot. Next worst choice would be bishop d6. Saves your pawn again. But... Now the bishop's brother is mad at him, the c8 bishop. He's supposed to move the pawn so he can escape. But now, let's try that. Nope, it's not going to let us do it. The bishop is blocking the pawn. And this guy is kind of stuck. You can try b6 and bishop b7. So this position is more reasonable than the other choices on our list um, that we've looked at so far. But let's say also... Not really the best choice, so we'll just take that off our list. Now, we're stuck with the last two choices that, that defend the pawn. That is d6, the Philidor opening. Not a bad choice. We're not going to go over it in this series because you do lock in your bishop from maybe aiming at the white side of the chessboard so easily, but this is a valid option for black to try, but we won't focus on, on it in our series. So you, you are locking up your bishop. So we'll focus on the most typical move, knight c6. A knight attacks the pawn, a knight protects the pawn. Okay, pretty balanced. 
here, white has a lot of choices that are that are pretty good, but we'll focus on the top four that are knight c3, bishop c4, bishop b5, or d4. And we'll all have, well, each of these choices will have a video in the future. But for now, today, we'll take a look at bishop c4, the Italian opening. I think at the club level, this is probably more popular than the other three choices. And I think it's because there's a lot of cheap shots that white has against your f7 pawn. There's a lot of just, uh, you know, if you're not careful, some something bad could happen on f7. It is only protected by a little baby king. So there's a bit of a tender spot. And because I think there's a lot of cheap knockouts, this is probably why it's very popular at the club level. Also not bad at the higher at a higher level as well. So what do we do about the Italian? Well, in this course, we're going to be taking a look at bishop c5. You're going to hit their weak f pawn. It's also guarded only by a baby king. So everyone is hitting this the weakness in the other guy's camp. Now the first thing to note is that this pawn, although poked, is not ready to be captured. If your opponent tries to capture it, no big deal. You just take it back. You might be concerned about your king being uncastled, but your opponent doesn't have any way to attack the king anymore. So this check, just take it. This check, just take it. So not much to do. Now, after bishop c5, white usually will play pawn c3. Why do you think white would play c3? That's right. He's preparing to send the brother pawn two spaces forward and fight for the center of the chessboard. Now, if we take on d4, they could take it back with the c pawn. So now we know why white played c3 to send the pawn to d4. This is a pretty good plan, fighting for the center of the chessboard. However, when white plays c3, there is a downside to his move. Who can find what might be the downside to the c3 move? Did you find it? Yeah, very good. The knight is supposed to go to c3 in most chess positions. And here, white has put his pawn in the knight's path. So the knight is now locked up. And so black should try to exploit that with a developing move, attacking this e4 pawn, we need to get ready to castle anyway. But it's just nice that the pawn is under attack and can't be protected by the knight going to c3. White will usually play d4. This saves his little pawn because he creates a counterattack on our bishop. If black is not very careful, he could be completely overrun uh, in the center of the chessboard. And I think this is where most beginners get into a little bit of trouble with the black pieces. They they usually do see that the bishop's under attack. And they'll make a passive move like I don't know, bishop b6 or bishop e7. Just save the bishop in any random way. But when you do that, um, first of all, your pawn is hanging on e5. It's unfortunate if you try to take it. Uh, so that's the first problem. We usually lose a pawn. And second, even if we didn't lose a pawn, it, it's usually not a good solution when someone uh, in chess attacks your piece and you just run uh, into a passive uh, defensive position. Usually when someone attacks you, you got to attack them back uh, in chess so you're not bullied. And here, uh, we should take this pawn on d4. And when they take it back, they did create that pawn duo that we worked so hard to try to stop. But don't worry, we're going to tear it down in a second. First, we do got to save our bishop, though. So we're to save the bishop. Again, this is where people make mistakes at the beginner level. Usually, you'll just like, I don't know, passive bishop b6 move. So they just attack your bishop, and you just run. Well, that's not terrible. But now your opponent owns the center, and they're going to just roll you over. Just push, uh, you know. And now your pieces are starting to run away from the center. This is not looking good. Not really what we want. So we have to, more or less, when we get attacked, we have to find a way to attack our opponent back. And with that is bishop b4 check. It's a pretty good move. Check. Your opponent can't start rolling you over with these pawns because their king is in danger. They have a bunch of ways to save their king. Knight c3, bishop d2, maybe knight d2. A little bit suspicious, but playable. Let's focus on bishop d2. We take it. They take it back. 
Well, they have to take it with their knight because otherwise their e-pawn is hanging, right? If they take it with their queen, just gobble that free pawn. It's kind of a funny way to win. Okay, so instead they take with their knight, defending the pawn. And now this is the most important part of our opening here. Whenever you have, whenever you're fighting against the pawn duo, you have to try to destroy it. It's too powerful, gotta tear it down. This is our only chance to tear it down. How can we try to tear it down? Who can find a good way to, to challenge this pawn to go? If you found d5, well, I'm very impressed. If you found d5, this is a critical move. Challenging the pawn duo while we still had a chance. If black was a bit lazy and just, let's say, did a normal developing move like castle, now these two pawns will completely crush your knights. Let's say d5. Oops, now you're running. e5, uh, this hurts. It hurts to even look at these knights all embarrassed like this. Don't get your knights um, evicted from the center like that. You have to fight against pawn duos as soon as you see them, if it's possible, of course. And here we, we have this one moment to challenge them with d5. And now the bishop's under attack, their pawn's under attack. Um, you know, they would love to create a space advantage with e5, but sorry, your, your bishop's under attack, buddy. So they have to take us, and now we can take it back. And here, I would say chances are roughly balanced. White has a space advantage with his d4 pawn. But on the other hand, that pawn might be a little bit weak. There's no cheap um, defenders for him. There's no pawns that could come to that little d4 pawn's protection. So the d4 pawn is an isolated pawn. He might be in trouble in the end game. Question is, will Black live to see an endgame? White does have a space advantage. Um, and he has a lead in development as well. Right? He has three pieces developed. Black only has two. So to me, the chances are roughly balanced. I'll leave in the comments, uh, I'll leave in the description section uh, a model game where Black actually won this position. He was he managed to blockade the center pawn with moves like 97. C6. Later, uh, he was able to, you know, challenge his center pawn, and uh, he did. He was able to blockade it. However, White probably <laughs> wasn't forced to lose the game, and so the game is is roughly equal. And that will conclude our beginner analysis of the Italian opening. Let's review the kind of the critical parts. There's a lot of critical parts, but. Against the Italian move, I'm suggesting bishop c5. Don't worry about knight g5, of course. Um, it's hanging itself. So that, that's a, a typical thing I hear from my students where they're very worried about knight g5 at all times, no matter what they do. Well, as long as you don't play knight, knight f6, uh, knight, f, knight g5 is, is not safe. So you don't have to worry about it. And by the way, uh, even if they did play knight g5, it's not the end of the world. You, you can just play d5, and now the, the bishop is, is not going to help the knight take on f7. Uh, there's a lot of theory, though, in that position, so we're, we're sticking with bishop c5, just avoiding all that for the moment. Maybe later we can do a video on it, but for the moment, yeah, knight g5 just blunders the knight. And maybe your opponents might do this on purpose, if they're bad, because they might have this idea to do the discovered attack, hitting the queen, hitting the bishop, but it doesn't work at all because we can move the queen with our own attack on the rook. And so, of course, if they took the bishop, a pretty silly loose rook. So when they save the rook, I guess rook f1, now you're free to just gobble up their pawn. And they've lost uh, the knight on g5, the pawn on g2, the pawn on d4. Uh, I've actually seen this at the Scholastic tournaments, maybe once or twice, not actually that popular. But I've seen it happen in, in rated games, and uh, actually Black didn't find Queen takes G2, and I think they, I forgot, they took out the Bishop or the Knight that they blundered their Queen. White actually went on to win this losing position. But uh, anyway, don't, don't fall for the discovered attack, just take on G2, and, and your opponent will soon resign. 
they've lost all their pieces. So yeah, knight g5, nothing to worry about. Because knight g5 is not a threat, you don't need to spend your time playing some h6 move, you know, the stopping knight g5. If it was truly such a threatening move, um, I guess h6 would be a requirement. But yeah, first of all, you don't have to put the knight there. On f6 to block g5. And second, even if you did, this this is not a, again, it's not a winning move, just d5 stops the attack. It's a lot of ideas here, but um, you know, black is doing well at the highest levels. So we don't have to be so worried about this move to, that we'd have to waste a tempo with h6. So instead, um, just bishop c5. And now you might be wondering, well, okay, fine. Let's say my opponent just castles. Now I play knight f6. At some point, I should play it right to castle. And now my queen's not defending g5. Now what? Now maybe they'll play knight g5 now. So maybe I should have played h6. Yeah, this doesn't actually work anymore. Now that black is, uh, you know, tempo is slightly different. Black was able to develop the bishop before putting the knight out. And so now f7 can be protected by just castling. And the sacrifice knight takes that sometimes we see at the scholastic tournaments isn't isn't a good idea for for the white side. White has spent so many tempo one, two, three, four, five tempo to expose your queen, um, but now they don't have any pieces that are developed to actually attack your exposed king. Um, you know, queen h five is protected, is stopped by the knight, and you know if you really need, you can always bring like say the bishop to f seven if you really need that many more defenders, but no one's even attacking your king, so you don't need more defenders. Thank you for joining me at this beginner chess course. Um, leave in the comments what, what opening we should cover next. Uh, again, these are going to be abbreviated um, so that they're, they're easier to digest. Thanks for watching.